The development of a toilet at first glance seemed to be simple, until I learned all of history along with a sewer system story and how many people died since the 15th century. The modern toilet actually is a result of several inventors and many, many years of progress. Today, we'll talk about toilet design, sewerage development, and awful diseases that cost thousands of lives. If you think that a toilet is the most common utility in the world, I'm afraid you'll be shocked by what I'm about to tell you. Let's start from the beginning. The use of toilets has been known since ancient civilizations. There were public latrines in ancient Rome or ancient Greece. Historians argue that they served residents like the so-called smoking rooms today. Citizens came to these places not only because of the natural needs, but also to communicate, exchange news, discuss important problems, and so on. Of course, there was no toilet paper in the latrines of the time, so people used reusable wooden sticks with a sea sponge. So, in the Middle Ages in European countries, similar primitive forms of public toilets and latrines were used in most cases. But in my opinion, the most amazing examples of the first toilets are preserved in European castle architecture. So, as far as I understand, there were two configurations, one and another. During the Renaissance, which is the 15th century, some more advanced latrine designs appeared in Europe, but they were still relatively primitive. Only in the 16th century, English writer and inventor C. John Harrington developed the first flushing lavatory for Queen Elizabeth I, an ancient ascender of the modern one. And yes, it had a flush valve for releasing water, a tank, and even a design for emptying the contents through a pipe into the pit. But it was not widely popular, because the smell from the king's dressing room hadn't gone anywhere. 200 years later, and I don't know why it took so long to perfect inventions, but it was discovered Harrington's design just locked a pipe band and an S-shaped trap or band to permanently retain some water inside the sewer, a so-called trap for sewer gases to limit odors. They were invented by Alexander Cumming in 1775. What about paper, you wonder? Well, it wasn't there yet. I mean, people in China used to have silk toilet paper in the 7th century already. However, it remained a rare and expensive commodity, and most Europeans continued to use other materials – cloth, straw, clay, or water. Toilet paper as such appeared in Europe relatively recently, in the 19th and 20th century. Another inventor, Joseph Brammer, later modified Alexander Cummings' design, replacing the conventional slide valve with a flap that covers the bottom of the toilet, and he came up with a flat valve system for the flush tank. But still, houses with latrines inside were very rare. Let's talk in general about portable devices of the 18th century. In fact, even if the inventors of that time came up with the toilet we know today, it wouldn't be relevant because the sewer system simply didn't exist. Most of the people in towns used chamber pots and buckets and emptied them every morning, usually just out of the window. Because even if there was a cesspool, the construction of those was not regulated. I mean, cesspools of that time were cleaned once every 8 to 10 years. So no wonder that chamber pots were usually emptied into street sewers from where they often drained at best into a few waste collectors and at worst, directly into rivers. Over time, municipal reforms forbid people from throwing fences outside to the street. They were fines at all. The authorities wanted people to build latrines with solid walls made of stone and concrete that hold waste, and it would force people to clean the latrines more often, on average two or three times a year. By the end of the 17th century, cesspools were cleaned more regularly, which is yay. But there were no strict regulations, and liquid waste seeped through the ground and polluted underground water sources, causing health problems. Filtration system, of course, didn't exist at that time either, and sanitary conditions led to terrible epidemics of intestinal and gastric diseases, from which thousands of people died. The urban population of Europe grew at rapid pace, the volume of waste in cities increased, and the sewers with passes literally poured in buckets every day quickly overflowed. But it wasn't like that everywhere. For instance, things were better in France. There were 30,000 cesspools in Paris in 1846, but on the other hand, there were only about 250 cleaners, so-called nightmen. These people had to clean hundreds of cesspools every night. 
Cleaners worked only at night because others were not very happy with the stink of this process. All work was carried out manually with shovels, and the sewage extracted from the pits was transported by horse-drawn cart. You wonder, where did those cleaners take this specific product later? Well, it was good if peasants bought this specific product, but usually it all was taken away somewhere far, far away and left there. In general, it was hellish work. Dangerous infections and gases formed in cesspools often led to suffocation of the unfortunate cleaners. It's terrible. But the worst thing is that in some countries the same thing happens to this day. For example, in India, all dirty and hard work must be done by representatives of the lowest untouchable caste, Hungi. They have to clean up streets and sewer drains and scoop out bathes from the so-called dry toilets, pits with no flush. Men and women suffer humiliation and receive extremely little for their work. Most workers are not provided with even minimal equipment and protection, so they are exposed to the most dangerous forms of viral and bacteriological infections that affect the skin, eyes, respiratory organs, gastrointestinal tract, and even limbs. Even though there have been a law in India since 2013 to protect people in this profession, it's practically not observed and this terrible discriminatory system still works. Things are no better in other countries. Laws do not always apply from the day, just like in England in 1848, when a new policy required new houses to be built with a toilet, latrine or cesspool already. But you know what? This didn't change anything, because it was not toilets, it was the sewerage that needed to be developed. Great Britain suffered cholera epidemics for 14 years, starting in 1846. But do you know what is it really? Cholera is an infectious disease caused by an intestinal bacterium that is spread through contaminated water or food. About 1 in 10 people who get sick develop severe symptoms such as watery diarrhea and vomiting. The rapid loss of body fluids leads to dehydration and shock. Without treatment, death can occur within a few hours to a few days. What's worse is that cholera spreads quite easily. One episode of diarrhea can cause a million-fold increase in the bacteria within the surroundings. Of course, this disease progresses in areas with inadequate sewage and drinking water treatment. Cholera bacteria can also live in the environment in Blackfish rivers and coastal waters. Raw shellfish can also be a source of infection. So, even the United States, cases of cholera infection have been reported after eating raw or undercooked shellfish from the Gulf of Mexico. In general, over the past 200 years of history, there have been eight significant epidemics of cholera, eight of which originated in India. The pandemic from 1852 to 1859 was the deadliest. It devastated Asia, North America, Africa and Europe. 23,000 people died in Great Britain alone in 1854. So over the history, cholera has affected many countries in different regions of the world. And if you think that cholera is over, it is not. Today, people suffer from the same cholera in the poorest countries. According to the World Health Organization, there were from 3 to 5 million cases of cholera and about 130,000 people died because of it in 2010. In the 21st century, in general, unsanitary conditions are the main reason for the spread of not only cholera, but also many diseases transmitted through soil and water, such as diarrhea, typhoid fever and dysentery. Just think about it. Diarrheal diseases account for 1 in 9 child deaths worldwide, making diarrhea the second leading cause of death among children under the age of 5. It is 525,000 deaths annually. In 2019 alone, more than 1.5 million people died from diarrheal diseases. This is more than all violent deaths combined. Approximately 90% of diarrheal deaths occur in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia where people continue to lack access to clean water, adequate treatment and health care, and low levels of vaccination against pathogens that cause their real disease. Let's go back to the 19th century, at the time of the strong stench, when cholera captured European cities and thousands of people died. English priest Henry Moll invented the so-called toilet with a dry soil system to combat disease. His invention spread widely in private homes and rural areas. Interesting fact, in Germany, a similar dry toilet was sold until the end of World War II. But the problem was again, not the toilets. The problem of unsanitary conditions was global. But the most striking example is perhaps the capital of Great Britain. For many centuries in London, people threw excrement directly into the Thames. 
The main city river was like an open collector, and that is why there was no fish or any other species. If not for cholera, who knows how long this outrage would have continued. However, the outbreak of the epidemic forced the authorities to turn to civil engineer Joseph Baselgat, who had long proposed to start building interconnected sewers and moving sewage from the water supply system. Most of the European neighbors followed this logic and started building their own sewer systems and treatment facilities. So, Joseph Baselgat saved more lives than the efforts of any other European builder in the 19th century. Closer to the 80s of the 19th century, the sewer systems of most European cities were modernized with the conversion of storm sewers into public ones. At the same time, more practical and efficient toilet bowls with water tanks were developed, which allowed waste to be flushed with water, reducing unpleasant outdoors. However, they were expensive and still out of reach for the most. In the modern sense of the toilet as we know it, with the water supply and a cistern for flushing into the sewer, it ended mass production only in 20th century. However, the development of sewage and wastewater treatment systems made flush toilets more popular and more accessible to the population. Over time, urinals, toilet modifications, water mobile toilets, and public latrines were in demand in various cities. And in more developed Asian countries, such as Japan, flush toilets appeared with a more efficient flush system and antiseptic additives to combat bacteria and odors. Toilets became standard items in apartments with the development of plumbing and technology. People began to think about ecology and invent more efficient and water-saving models. Currently, developments in this area are aimed at increasing user comfort and inconvenience, improving efficiency, minimizing water consumption, and reducing environmental impact. Many countries are developing smart toilets equipped with sensors for monitoring health and diagnosing diseases through urine and stool analysis. You know, today there are companies and entire communities that work on stationary and mobile urinals for women for events. What's more, today you can already get a toilet with built-in owner recognition options. Yes, literally identifying each family member with the option to set each one individual preferences. Ranging from favorite drip washing, drying, seat heating, playing your favorite track, and an option to automatically close the lid, jokingly called marriage saving. Let me know in comments below, what do you think of such feature? Is this problem really so annoying that can lead to a divorce? Anyway. The development of toilets from the 15th century to the present day testifies to the constant evolution of hedging, sanitation, technology, design, and functional innovation. You know what? I would really like to stay on this positive note, but there is something else. While the civilized world improves their water clauses to the point of insanity, what do you think? What is the percentage of the world's population that lives without more than toilet bowls and any sewage? The truth is a lot. 4.2 billion people worldwide which is almost half of the world's population, do not have the opportunity to use modern toilets and live without sewage. And this is insane! Another 1.77 billion people on the planet still use the simplest pit latrine. While laws exist in many countries to protect groundwater sources from pollution, those who build cesspools largely ignore them by not maintaining a safe distance between them and water sources. The use of such groundwater as a source of drinking water leads to intestinal diseases. This is especially dangerous for children as they may be at risk of infections. The second problem with this piece is that floor facets, dump holes are recommended to be no larger than 10 inches to prevent children from falling. But these rules are not always followed, and the saddest part is that small children fall into latrines quite often. The exact statistics may vary by country, region, and time, but such cases are not uncommon. There is another thing that shocks me. About 673 million people, which is about 8.4% of the world's population, practice open defecation, which increases the risks of the pathogens transferred by flies between feathers and food. It is these pathogens that are the main causes of infectious diarrhea and intestinal worm infections. Many people living in poor and remote regions of these countries do not have not only sewerage but also running water. Nine more countries are in acute crisis. Interesting fact. World Toilet Day is an official United Nations and National Observance Day on the 19th November to inspire action to tackle the global sanitation crisis. There is a link in the description below to learn more about it. Thank you for watching. I'd love to hear what you think of this all in the comments below. Is there anything we can do to decrease all those terrible numbers? Don't forget to subscribe and if you want to learn more about this particular topic, please let me know.